Hi, and welcome to another episode of Mr. Ford's Guide to the A-plus certification exam, How to Be a Computer Technician. In this episode, we take a look at output devices. So welcome back. On our last video, we took a look at input devices, and now we are going to take a look at how to get information out of the computer, i.e. the output devices. First of all, a computer would be pretty worthless to us if we couldn't get information out of it. You put all this time and effort into getting stuff in, you want something out of it. You want to know something. It's like, look, I did this, now show me something good. So an output is uh, getting information out of the computer, giving us information we can use. So some common output devices are monitors. This is the most common output device. So for example, in the last video, we took a look at the most common input device, the keyboard. The most common output device would be the monitor. These sound like good A plus test questions. And that's because they have been over the years. So a monitor is a good example or the most common example of an output device. And it produces something called soft copy, meaning you can't touch it. It is digital, it's electronic, it lives in the digital world. The next device would be a printer. Printers produce hard copy, something you can take with you. And then you also have speakers. So if you're listening right now, the so calm, soothing sounds of Mr. Ford's class, you are listening to your speakers. <laughs> Anyhow, a monitor. Again, this is the primary output device. There are two types of monitors most commonly encountered in the consumer market. I would say one of these is quickly, quickly disappearing, although you will still find holdouts out there who just haven't joined <laughs> The rest of the world and that would be the crt the cathode ray tube and these are again old technology largely replaced again you're not going to run into them very often in the average consumer market but they're still out there so be aware that you have crt monitors the other one are definitely the more common ones and those would be the lcd monitors that would be the liquid crystal display monitors then we have your display your video adapters these are the video cards in the previous videos when the processors i showed you the video card this is getting information out okay this is presenting the video visual information or the information from the computer game this allows you to see what's happening uh, the component can either be integrated meaning it's built into the motherboard or it can be that expansion card now here's the rule of thumb if it's integrated if it's part of the motherboard then it's a lower end it's a cheaper video card and so if you're a gamer you're, you don't want it a gamer does not want to use integrated video a gamer wants an expansion card this gets a little more complicated when you deal with laptops because you really can't put an expansion card in a laptop and you're like i'm like what's going on here um now, now there's exceptions to that so please don't think that's an that's a 100 percent rule here but you can buy laptops which have separate GPUs, separate graphic processing units built in. So you have a CPU and you have a graphics and it comes down to shared memory. So if you're buying a laptop and you want to play games with it, you want to ask, is this shared memory or does video have its own memory? And that will let you know as far as that goes. And also price should be a giveaway too. A $300 laptop does not have a separate video card. Now, I keep saying for gamers, for gamers, for gamers. Let's say that you're not a gamer. You have no interest whatsoever in playing games. That's fine. You probably don't need a separate video card. If you just want to do Office products, if you just want to you know, do Word and word processing and check the spreadsheets, then you don't need a video adapter. You don't need an external or, excuse me, expansion card video adapter. The integrated is just fine. Now, if you do multimedia, however you do video editing and graphic design, then you probably again want to start taking a look at that video expansion card. You will probably want a higher end one there. So that's your video adapter. The next one is your printer. Your printer again makes your hard copy. It's an output, output device that delivers hard copy. There are several types of printers on the market. You have the inkjet, which is definitely the most common consumer type of printer. You have a laser printer, which is again, is very common. Yeah, I would say general general route generalities here. You're going to run into laser printers more often in a business setting, and your inkjet's more common in your home setting. Again, this is not a rule. So if you walk in and somebody has a laser printer sitting by their own desk at their home, you know it's fine. But this is just I'm being general here. 
You have the daisy wheel. This is old technology. You have the dot matrix. Again, this is also old technology. This is the old and the little little holes on the side. Uh, dye sublimation. These are expensive. These produce very uh, very high quality outputs, like images, pictures, things like that. And then you have thermal. Thermal is old, and I'm trying to see real quick if I have anything around that's thermal. Uh, nothing, anyways. But thermal, you run into all the time. If you go to the store and you get a receipt, it's usually on thermal paper. That explains why after time, the, the ink, the writing starts up. Oh, there you go. It starts to disappear. So, for example, I've got a a receipt from Walmart. Okay. Chances are this is done with a thermal printer. And if I left it out in the sun, I would lose the information on that receipt. So uh, thermal printers, still very common, old technology, but you run into a lot with retail stores. The next one is a sound card. Sound cards allow the computer to create audio output. Again, this is also a, a not shipped with the original computers. In fact, my very first computer, my 386, didn't have audio i had to get an audio card install it into there into the, the the motherboard so i had sound and then i told you i had to make the choice when i installed the mouse <laughs> the old days the struggle was real the next one is your modem modem is actually an acronym for modulate demodulate it takes the digital signals and turns it to analog signals this is what we used to use to connect to the internet on a phone line and you would get the and all that good stuff and it, what it does is the phone system used to work analog and your computer works digital analog is your waves and digital is your zero one zeros one zero ones and the two can't communicate with each other and so the, the the modem would take the digital information from the computer turn it into analog waves which would go out in the phone line and the phone line would bring in analog waves to the computer, and the modem would turn that into digital information. Uh, I don't even know if you have a modem on your computer. I know mine doesn't. So take a look at the back. If you have a small looking like a phone jack on the back of the computer, you still have a modem. If it's an especially large phone looking jack, that is not a modem. That is a network interface card, which we'll talk about right now. And that would also be called a NIC. Now, I had an instructor one time who used to get really upset if we called it a NIC card. Um, he was an English teacher by trade, <laughs> which explains it. And he would be like, no, network interface card is what NIC stands for. So if you call it a NIC card, you're basically saying network interface card card. It stuck with me. So it's NIC or network interface card. You don't say NIC card. It's, don't, don't do it. You make English teachers everywhere upset. <laughs> Um, it can be integrated or added as an expansion card. Most motherboards, I would say, come with it built in. You just plug it in and you're good to go. It allows the computer to connect to a network cable and thus a network. Okay, we're almost done. In our next video, we're going to take a look at the miscellaneous components of a computer as well as I give you my top five for Chapter 2. So be sure to tune in for the next video. Also, don't forget, if you want to help support this channel, please look in the description below. $2 a month will mean a will make a huge difference. So until the next video, goodbye for now.